<laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Lisa Wind. I've just flown in. And today we're back with more Dragon Age Origins. It kind of came to me in between sessions that I did not read codexes after we finished that last arc. So I'm gonna go for a little bit of a walk, I'm gonna head back to camp, and I'm gonna go read us some codexes. Because I think it's time. I have been setting down in ink the tales of our exploits, and I have been thinking about ways to describe you. Oh. You are unlike any animal oh, I have ever met. The general. Almost human in your intelligence and understanding. So, let me see. You are loyal, yes? Obviously. That one is obvious. Very, very clever. Yep. This is also obvious. You are terrifying when you have to be, but gentle and sweet as a dove at other times. Yep. And you are also playful. Yes, Sometimes yes. gluttonous. <coughs> no? What is all this begging for food scraps then? General. Well, all right. You're not gluttonous. You're just a lover of fine foods. How's that? Exactly. You happily wag that tail, General. Let us go. Onward. Hey there. Bye there. Ah, the mountains. Walking, walking, running, but you go along. Of course. Wow, the long road. I have been studying Mother's Grimoire. Oh, Do you cool. wish to hear what I have found? Hello to you too, by the way. What did you find? Tis not what I expected. It's a cookbook, I right? I had hoped for a collection of her spells, a map of the power that she commands. Yes. But this is not it. Yet you look disturbed or disappointed then. Hmm. Eh, disappointed then? No. There is much of interest within her writings, things I did not know. Really? And one in particular I would never have suspected. Yes? Here, in great detail, Flemeth explains the means by which she has survived for centuries. Ooh. Go on. <laughs> Three. As much as I want to say it, no. A spell of immortality. Oh, if only it were so. Flemeth has raised many daughters over her long lifetime. Yes. There are stories of these many witches of the wilds throughout chastened legend. Mm -hmm. Yet I have never seen a one, and always and wondered why not. And now I know. Oh? They are all Flemeth. What? When her body becomes old and wizened, like now? she raises a daughter. And when the time is right, she takes her daughter's body for her uh, own. Um, no. So what do you intend to do about it? Because, you know, Mordigan doesn't dawn on me she just let something happen to her. There is only one possible response to this. Yes? Flemeth needs to die. Uh -huh. I will not sit about like an empty sack waiting to be filled. <laughs> Flemeth <laughs> must be slain. Right. I need your help this to do serious, it. This is serious, darn it. You know, it, it, eh, talk to her. Real extreme. Why do you need my help? Uh, why do you need my help? I, you're kind of powerful, Morgie, I'm just gonna say. Because if she is slain while I am near, I am not certain that she will not simply be able to take possession of me right Good there. Good point. So obviously I cannot be the one to do it. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Makes sense. You know what? Fine. Let's do this. I'll be if I can, just not right now. There's an asterisk next to that. Then what needs to be done is for you to go back to Flemeth's hut in the Kakari Wilds yes. without me. Confront go her on. and slay her quickly. I doubt she will truly be dead even then, but it will uh -huh. take her years to find a new host and recover her power, if that <laughs> is even possible. The thing I must have is her true grimoire. Yes. With it, I can defend against her power in the future. Everything else in her <laughs> no. hut is yours. But... 
And do I have a time limit on this? Not really. But Good. the sooner the better, no? Ah, uh, well, you see, it's like, I have this other quest I need to do, and uh, mechanically speaking, I'm grotesquely underleveled. And yeah, there's a few party members you need to pick up, and you know, I got stuff to do. Let's see what I can do. I am grateful. As you should be. The sooner be. this can be done, the sooner it will set my mind at ease. Aww, Morgy. And <laughs> she approves. I have to murder people to get your approval, young lady. Although she is now warm. Yay! But I'm going to save. Because I swear I had other things I was going to do. It's time to go read some codexes. Gather around, everyone! Portica will read to you. Let's just get in front of the fire first. Get nice and comfy. Play with the camera. There we go. Journal. Quest related codexes. Yay. Quest related. The key to the city. <clears throat> Under quest related, 309. While your concerns have merit, the assembly made itself clear. Space within the Taig is at a premium, but the intended function of the hull merits the additional resources committed. The statue of the Paragons must be the core of the Hall of Heroes. There is no other placement that so benefits dwarven interests. It is the first glimpse that the surface ambassadors have of Orzammar. An introduction not just to our living ancestors, but also to the stone from which we were born. They must see it shaped before they can understand the complexities of its raw form. The hall must also serve as a second purpose. As a last sight for departing brethren. That's true. Those who choose to leave must do so of heavy graves of their ancestors at their backs. It is a reminder of duty and consequence. We will promote all manner of trade but also reinforce those who leave for too long or return as strangers to the stone. Prim report from the Zembly Zoning Commission. Yay. <laughs> Person to order 5-1A, no dwarf of indeterminate caste may conduct business in the commons. This was subs uh, subsequently clarified by the assembly. To means that we're owing and operating the stalls and kiosks and limited to those identified and approved house names with traceable ancestry lineage to that of three generations. Boring. Exceptions include individual purchase of goods or services from established stalls or kiosks, provided the funds are presented at the opening of transaction, the discretion of the stall or kiosk owner. I'm sure you understand the need to maintain a strict quality control over all goods and services that flow through Orzammar, especially when making a concentrated effort to encourage outside investment. The standard of Dust Town and that of the common brand are simply not sufficient. Your trade permit is hereby denied. From a judgment of the Assembly Trade Council regarding Midal's reclaim wares. Eh. I don't know. It's stiff. Episode 321. Episode... <laughs> Entry 321. The Mage's Collective. Despite the loyalist grasp, the mage political community, many libertarians and equitarians have begun to see eye to eye with respect to the Chantry's role in the mage's daily life. A growing number of mages, particularly those whose magic never strays from the Maker's mandate, feel that the Chantry's constant oversight is a burden upon their creativity and their will and one hinders their ability to do their work. And we scroll down. These mages, along with a number of hedge wizards, who work their arts outside the Chantry's influence, you mean Maleficarum? We talked about this too, lo too long ago. A farm to shadow guild of sorts, a mages collective, where members can submit requests and have them seen to without judgment. This collective manages to work in relative secrecy, their members discreet and their clients anonymous. As of yet, this collective has seen no sanction from the Templars, and there has been no sign of its members are participating in magic, in which the Maker would not approve. Still, practicing magic outside the influence of the Chantry is a dream of some, 
and a dangerous notion to others, and many believe that it is only a matter of time before the veil of secrecy is lifted and the Mage's Collective is brought to swift, brutal justice. From Treaties on Magic and Politics by First Enchanter Josephs. 326. Scrolls of Bannister. To align with the power of the Fade is the first of many steps. Further is to align with the mind with the Fade's rule and find ties between the realm of dreams and the realm of flesh. This is the true power of blood magic. The flesh and the mind are inseparable. Therein lies the power of influence and control minds. Below the text are indecipherable runes and stains of blood ink. Others may speak of skin. Ah. Sanctity of the mind. I know how to read words. To those who know the true power of blood, this is foolishness. The mind is no more sacred than the knee, or small toe, or the ear. It's the man's organ, or of reasoning, nothing more. And true reasoning requires connection to the rhythm of the blood, the timeless pounding of life. Interrupt this, and even the mind is yours to control. Oh, the text is a diagram of blood magic ritual in progress. With no notation or description. Thank you for that. Thank you. Eh, 328. Five pages, four mages. Tondias vi antanas. In maleficarum dragon eterbium salteraven. Yeah. Words I'm probably mispronouncing. Spake he the words and brought life. Spake the words. Ascension. Answer lie in. Text intelligible. Text illegible. I know what it's mean. I really do. Notes on page below. Here I begin my study, knowing full well it will change the circle forever. Let history mark the date that now began work 929 Dragon, so that when new calendars are put to paper, the first date... Ah. The date font zero zero is known with certainty for the months of gods. Finally, the people through me. Enchanter fonced. Yeah, somewhere what looks like Latin, even though Latin's not a thing. Note on the page below. 479 sovereigns plus favors. That's a lot of money. I wonder where they got that. Immortality worth every coin. Words of creation, proof of maker. No one must know until translations are complete. I will have the first enchanter, the ear of kings. I will own the kings. Glory everlasting. Enchanter Medalt. Or, you know, maybe not. Latin phrase again, text illegible. Note below the page. Notes on wondrous discovery. A strange script, un uniform by steady hand. Yes, one would expect the agent of the maker to be steady. In fact, it follows my all my expectations of the words the maker would bestow. It is perfect. And once translated, I will have such fun lording this over the chantry. Every worth every bit. Enchanter Geis. And the Latin phrase again. Notes on the page below. Make her take the vendor. A copy! A fake! Why didn't I see it? It was obvious. Spake! Laughing stock. No one must know. The hair Jom. I find him, I'll kill him. Cheery. Latin phrase again. Note below the page. The words elude me, but I will defy their obstinance. Worked by the old gods or the maker himself, I will wring their secrets into my hands. I need the essence of the powerful and the pure. And so begins the bloody road. But at the end, godhood, the keys to the black city. Enchantaranos. <laughs> yeah. Didn't end so well, did it? Watching? Ah, uh, watch guard every... Watch guard of the reaching. I'm telling you guys, it's a test like the summoning. Why else would lessons be canceled? And that outburst in the library under Oldred? An older tome fell to a page on reaching. I copied what I could before they pushed us out. Ritual note. A sword lowered to strike through the ground. You can't tell me I wasn't supposed to see that. It's too convenient. I'm looking for more, and you'd be smart to help. I can't. No, 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 and stop asking! I'm not getting in trouble because of you again. I don't care what's in the basement. I, I kind of care. 
and neither do the senior magi. Everything is about Uldred and the upper floors. I don't know what you're digging up, but those tomes are way older than our lesson texts, and apprentice shouldn't touch them. Ritual note. The threads burn before a giant spear raised. He stands alone, so whispers are known faults. Nolan, scribbled in a corner. <laughs> don't need him. Owain knew reaching. And some more text. First encounter with Ravel fell suddenly to his disease of the lungs. Aw, that's sad. This unfortunate disruption in the direct line of descendants from tower funding from tower founding should be treated as opportunity. The circle will reform practices to better address the times. Many rituals remain valuable, but some the two bells, Gnarl's Lamont, Watch Guard of the Reaching, Benfort, uh, something, have little or no meaning in our text. We will move forward, as Rovell would have wished, and commit these and other ceremonies to the age we have left, with no plan of a state his belongings have been transferred into the common library for the benefit of all. Excerpt, Circle of Magi, Declaration, Kinloch Hold, Translation, 590 Exalted, Scribbled in a corner. Reaching again and old? They don't know. Idiots. Awards. Weekend. Yeah, some stuff went down. Today, we passed even further, far beyond any reach of man. Yay? The inverted glow of the Black City was always on the horizon of perception. But a path eludes, as always, untraveled in memory, living or otherwise. There it is, a pull. Whispers abound. Something great is there. And away from this, I will always in peripheral another mind untethered. Tomorrow I will reach out with my full attention and try to rescue him from the, from his listing. Can someone else have come this far? The wonders we will share. Ritual note. The vessel in hand, words of another time, drip, little, drip literal power. I knew words. Documents of reaching. Estimated second century. Ancient first enchanter. Pointed watchguard of the reach. To be held in secret. Scribble in a corner. Reaching! Before the circle! Someone else in the fade! I want this! No. No, you don't. No, you don't. Maker doesn't want you to come hang out. If he did, you'd be invited. The silver core transmuted black. Black! There is no wonder his form shattered. When returned was not of mortal, nor native fade. Doesn't afterthought prove that gods where direct action is long missing? There is no purpose in this beast. Let the strength of the tower, whether it and memory pass, the only legacy be taught. Stay focused within the fade. Whims escape their own action. Ritual note. Sword raised to sever connection. Documents of the reaching. Estimated second century ancient. First enchanter appointed watchguard of the reaching. To be held in secret. Scrolled in corner. Cord? Peasant magic. Must know. Cannot. Can almost see. Whispers want. Hastily scribbled. Whisper says Great Hall, hidden above us in the whole time. The vessel in hand, words from another time, drip literal power. Put on bowl. Sword raised to sever the connection. Cord cut. Sword lowered to strike through the ground. File. The threads placed before a warrior. Spear raised. Shielded from each side, so whispers are known faults. Where is this? It whispered order, but not where. It's in my head. Uh, if you're hearing a voice in your head and you're a mage, that, that, that's kind of a bad sign. Just saying. Shaha Weird. A collection of powerful but undirected thoughts coalesced in the fade. Such a thing being is in direct opposition to singular focus and drive. Destruction made flesh. The mind or minds that loosed this within the fade must have been powerful and ancient indeed. Haha, <laughs> you have no idea. 332. The spot. Maker's win. Darcy. I said I'd wait, but it's not just a disagreement. Aldred said abominations loose. One was in the mentor's robes. If you've made it here, something in the spot may help you out. No point in hiding it from the senior mages now. And don't worry about dinner's usual fee for moving his bed. He's dead. Apprentice manned. Oh, I hope Wynn didn't know that person. 
Letter of Termination. My dear apprentice, I have sent this courier with the snow to officially end your period of apprenticeship. I harbor you no ill will, for despite your complete incompetence, you have failed to do lasting harm to myself or my work. Sadly, I will not have a chance to witness your floundering attempts at improvement. When you return from your current errand, your apprenticeship will be over. Now, hurry. I have dire need of supplies I sent you pro yeah, to procure. Sincerely, the Mage Tanister. What a dick. Seriously, not nice. Oh well. Let's see. Eh, what do we want to do? Let's go. Creatures. We actually have quite a bit of creatures. I don't know how much I can get through today. Arcane Horror. Upon ascending to the second floor of the tower, we were greeted by a gruesome sight. As a ragged collection of bones rang the robes of one of the senior enchanters. I had known her for years, watched her raise countless apprentices, and now she was a mere puppet of some demon. Transcribed from tale told by Templar in Antivan City, 713 Storm. Demons, of course, have no form in our world. When they enter, either where the veil is particularly thin or through blood magic summoning, they must take possession of a body. When a pride demon takes control of a corpse of a mage, an arcane horror is born. Although they appear to be little more than bones, some other fierce creatures, possessing not only all the spellcast abilities of a living mage, but also the capacity to heal and even command other animated corpses. So in other words, ew. <laughs> and not the cute little grammar. Corpse. It's very cheery here, right? To anyone who doubts the wickedness of blood magic, I say, with your own hands, strike down the corpse of your own brothers who have fallen in the Battle of Omelithakar. When we then we may discuss morality. Knight Commander Benedict sent a letter to the Divine, 546 Exalted. You know, he has a point. Just saying. The walking dead are not, as the superstitious are wont to believe, the living come back for revenge. They are, rather, corpses possessed by demons. You know, that's way more scientific. The shambling corpse controlled by a demon of sloth. Yay. Causes its enemies to become weak and fatigued. Corpses possessed by rage demons go berserk and simply wade into their opponents mindlessly. Devouring corpses are held by hunger demons and fed upon the living. The more powerful demon rarely designs possess a dead coast. Cheery. We are getting all the cheery stuff. Ah, oh, desire demon. In all my studies, I must say that the most intriguing was the interview with a desire demon. Yeah, yeah, I could see that being a really cool interview, actually. That the creature was willing to speak with me was a sign that this was no mere monster. <laughs> debatable. Mindlessly driven by its nature. Again, debatable. But rather a rational being. Oh, my apologies for the on. As interested in me as I was in it. <laughs> That's what she said. It took a form that I would call female. Air quotes. <laughs> There's no quotes around, but in my head I'm doing it. Though I had no doubt that it could appear otherwise. I wonder if it appeared as it did because I wanted it to or because I expected it to. She, and indeed, I, I can only think of her as such now, smiled warmly at me and laughed a musical sound that seemed to thrill my old heart. Ah, uh, no. <laughs> Don't listen to the demons, that's not good. So frightened was I of this creature's legendary abilities to twist the hearts of men, and so relieved was I when I looked across the table into her dark eyes. This was a fearsome creature of the Fade, but as I spoke with her I slowly came to realize that this demon was merely misunderstood as we mages are ourselves. Oh, baby, no. Nothing good comes of this. From the journal of former senior enchanter Malleus, once of the Circle of Ravain, declared apostate 920 dragon. Yeah, it doesn't surprise me. And we scroll, and we take a drink. Of all the threats from beyond the veil, few are more insidious and deceptively deadly than the desire demon. In folklore, such demons are characterized as peddlers of lust. 
luring their prey into sexual encounter only to be slain at the ah, culmination. I was going to say the climax. It's like, no, that's not that word. While a desire demon can indeed deal in pleasure, in truth, they deal with any manner of desire that humans can possess. Wealth, power, and beauty, to name a few. This is also true. And we are scrolling again. Far more intelligent than the bestial hunger and rage demons, and more ambitious than the demons of sloth. These dark spirits are among the most skilled at tempting mages into possession. Yeah, I can see that. Many who serve the whims of Desire Demon never realize it. They are manipulated by illusions and deceit, if not outright mind-controlled, although these demons are reluctant to resort to such crude measures. Instead, they seem to take great pleasure in corruption. The greater the deceit, the greater the victory. Only demons of pride prove more fearsome opponents when aroused. I was gonna say, when aroused, it's like, eh, that's another thing. <laughs> Anyway, their abilities to affect the mind allow them to assume disguises and even alter the environment of th to their purpose. Not to mention the great strength and speed they possess if they should have to resort to more physical means. Most often desired human will attempt to bargain its way to freedom if overpowered. Many stories exist that depict mages defeating desired demons to the point where they wish can be arrested from them. Somehow, I doubt that. It should be noted that such stories, where the demon almost always gets their hand, even when the mage thinks he wishes he had been granted. Yeah, in other words, don't mess with desire, demon. They're not your friends. They don't want to hang. Dragon. Dragonlings. When they hatch dragons are roughly the size of a deer and voraciously hungry. They live for a short time in their mother's lair before venturing out on their own. The slender, wingless creatures are born in vast numbers, so only a few ever make it to adulthood. Yay! Maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that is a good thing. Let's see. Golem. Uh, yeah. Once a crucial part of Orzammar's defense, golems have all but vanished as the secret to their ma manufacture was lost over thousands of years. But few golems remain are guarded closely by the Shaperit, if brought out when the battle with the Darkspawn grows desperate enough to risk their loss. <sighs> oh, so there's still golems in Orzammar. Interesting. No one now would sell a golem for any price. But in ancient times, dwarves sold many golems to magister lords of Tevinter. Because, you know, Tevinter, slaves, eh, go hand in hand. They are devastating weapons in war, living siege engines, capable of hurling boulders like a catapult, or plowing through enemies like an earthquake. Yeah, someone that recently spent time as a golem. Yeah. I believe it. And there's a lot more to read, just looking at how long we've been going. I think here's a good place to cut the video. When we come back, there'll be some more codex readings. So until next, tack like a tail, hero.